Hello and welcome to Friday's Masterclass edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I'm going to be attempting today's Times Cryptic crossword for you and talking you through the thoughts as I have them. <laughs> uh, we shall see how that goes. Now, unusually for a Friday, the snitch rating, uh, the snitch rating is an, the unofficial rating of difficulty for the Times crossword, tells me that this puzzle is easier than usual. Uh, normally Friday is the hardest day of the week. In fact, let's have a look at the stats. Um, right, well, that's very interesting. The only name up there that I think is a real solver is actually the, the person in second position. Moan, I think, is John McCabe. <laughs> Two minutes, 58 seconds. That's ludicrously fast. That is ludicrously fast. In fact, Moan earlier this week um, stunned me on on the quick uh, the quick the Times Quick Cryptic, which is sort of this training version for the for the Times Crossword. So it is easier, but it's normal size, and he finished that in one minute twenty nine or something. It was something ludicrous. I thought I'd had a good run at it, and I did it in about two minutes 56 or something which is quick for me um and yeah but i mean one one and a half minutes for a cryptic crossword mad absolutely mad uh anyway anyway that's that's by the by we're going to do this uh, together in a minute i've got a birthday i'd like to i'd like to wish suze a very happy birthday suze i'm i'm informed by your husband steve that you normally watch um these these friday editions i think you watch quite a quite a bit of cracking the cryptic thank you for doing that um and I hope you have a brilliant birthday today. I understand there won't be chocolate cake, which I slightly disapprove of, but Steve says there will be something crummy instead. I don't know what that means, but I, I hope it's tasty and I hope you have a great birthday today. Um, anything else to mention? Not really, I don't think. Let's just get cracking and make sure I click on the right puzzle. Here we go. And oh, hopefully the internet's working. I think the window is just about in the right place. Right, so Sawyer's rubbish leg pull on the contrary. That must be a reference to Tom Sawyer, isn't it? Uh, leg pull. Sawyer's rubbish. Rubbish could be rot. I'm just trying to think of short synonyms for words in the clue. Um, leg pull. What's a leg pull? It's like a joke or a, if you rib somebody. And on the contrary, I'm, I'm thinking that probably means either reverse. So it might, it might be rot and then a, a word like rib reversed, or it might be that leg pull has to appear first. I haven't got that. I don't know what that is. Let's try five across charming animated young explorer is that dora is dora the explorer from a book or from a cartoon i don't know but i'm wondering that could be dora uh, visits italian island on the way back charming uh why can't i get that i want to put dora in the middle of it <laughs> either forwards or reverse because we've got something going on on the way back i'm trying to think of the four letter italian island oh elba adorable it is okay right oh, goodness me okay i couldn't think of the italian island for nearly long enough but adorable is going to be right um so we've got elba famous for napoleon's uh, uh initial exile i think was on elba wasn't it uh, and then saint helena for the next exile might be wrong but that, that's what that's what my brain is telling me and we've got dora who must be the animated dora the explorer visiting elba on the way back so reversed um and that gives us adorable and if something is adorable it is charming now let's go for five down now i've not looked at the clue but i'm hoping this is some sort of work of literature <laughs> so but we might just be able to no, no, it's not, I don't think. Oh, well, Saturday's client ordered makes me think like... No, I have got this. Right, okay, it is a work of literature. 
Um, and those people who do the Times crossword, it will probably be something they're very familiar with. People who do the Times crossword, I think, I, I don't want to give too much away. In fact, how should we do this? I'll, I'll give some, I'll talk about the answer after I've given some hints as to how to get the answer. So Saturday's client ordered, um, I presume is 15 letters, although I haven't counted it. I think it is 15 letters. So it's an anagram. And then, so that means the definition is a bookcase for a violinist, which is an extraordinary definition. So you're really going to have to think cryptically about what that could be referring to. Now, do you know any famous violinists? And you probably do, <laughs> um, but your hoodie menu in won't fit. Um, so I think, I think what we ne actually need to do here is to think of, do we know any fictional violinists? And it might not be what they were really known for. And semi-famously, Sherlock Holmes liked to play the violin. Um, and a case, one of his cases, which a book, the name of the book that featured this case was A Study in Scarlet, which I think is probably an anagram of Saturday's Client. I'm not going to double check that. It feels about right, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, obviously, most people who do cryptic crosswords, I think uh, they warm to the works of uh, Conan Doyle and Sherlock Holmes, of course. So I, I think that won't have held Moan up for very long. Let's try it. Let's try six down. Uh, making show and opera potentially. OK. Um, well, the thing that I'm thinking here, I haven't actually solved this yet, but I, I, sh I ought to be able to, I feel. That what I'm thinking here is and opera is eight letters and the word potentially can be an anagram indicator because it's so the way we have to read and opera is as a string of characters so those characters could potentially make something else couldn't they um so making show on on parade is what we need to do on parade something's on parade it's making a show isn't it so there we go we've done another one seven down guardian okay i'm thinking two synonyms here i haven't read the rest of the clue there are two synonyms aegis which is a sort of old word for a shield uh, and an apron an apron is a guardian of your sort of clothes in the kitchen so i'm wondering if one of those might be the answer uh, and it's not. <laughs> it was the third guardian. Um, so, OK, so here we've got article on hair care product. So Mark's big tip uh, for solving cryptic crosswords which is, is a very, very good one. Um, but it requires a bit of experience is to have at your fingertips an enormous number of short synonyms for all sorts of things. So can we think of a short synonym for hair care product. And hopefully a lot of you will think of hair gel. Well, if you think of the word gel in the context of this answer, it becomes very clear the answer must be angel. Well, it would be if I could type it. So what's this article referring to? Well, that's referring to an indefinite article like a or an, or it could be the definite article, the. So it's an article of speech. We've got an and then gel, an angel is a guardian, as in a guardian angel. Um, let's try eight down. Learning. OK, do we know any short synonyms for learning? Well, there is one, that, a four letter one that comes to my mind, which is law, L-O-R-E. If you learn, you know, learning as a as a noun, um, the learning to do with the Anglo-Saxons would be the Anglo-Saxon law, L-O-R-E. So I'm thinking law might be involved about key battleground at the eastern front uh, i don't know what that one is i mean learning about key seems to be saying find a synonym for learning and put it around the edge of a key which is quite typically a musical key, so literally A, B, C, D, E, F, or G. 
Um, and then battleground, we need a four letter word for a battleground. And then everything would make, well, Leningrad? Battleground at the Eastern Front? It, okay, no, okay, I'm totally wrong. It is Leningrad. Uh, learning about is actually an anagram. It's saying move the characters of the word learning about, shuffle them. And if we shuffle them and add the D at the end for the musical key, then we do get a battleground on the Eastern Front being Leningrad. Okay, let's try this one. Sticky stuff, goo starts to get under new keyboard okay it's not goo <laughs> um, so hopefully a lot of you will be able to guess at the answer to this four letter word might mean sticky stuff might mean keyboard normally the the definitional part of a cryptic clue is at the start or the end um, but but the key to understanding the wordplay is starts to so that's saying take the starting letters to the following four words. The starts to the words get, under, new, and keyboard are G, U, N, and K, which spells out gunk, which is sticky stuff. So is this ruling or relent? Soften, relent. Okay, there's always one of these clues, or no, there's almost always one of these clues in a Times crossword. And if there is one, there will not be a second. That is a rule the constructors are given. Uh, and this is a hidden answer. So the answer to this clue is actually spelt out within the clue. So soften some Lahore lentils. Um, if you take some of the string of letters Lahore lentils, you can see spelt out in order R-E-L-E-N-T, relent. And obviously if something relents, it softens. Uh, so let's try that one. 15 down, elected. Well, if you're in, you're elected, aren't you? You're in power. Republican, that's normally R, that could be that R, in Springfield. <laughs> well, that's actually a reference to Dusty Springfield. Um, and so we have to put R in Dusty after in, and we get industry, which is hard work. <laughs> so it's not a reference to sort of the Simpsons, um, although it would have been funny if it was. Let's have 16 down, stretches. Grammatical construction sentence. Yeah, it is just sentences. That's a double definition. So stretches, as in a, if you did a stretch of time in prison, you would be doing your sentence, wouldn't you? And a grammatical construction is a sentence. So let's have a look at 19 down. A uh, hundred milliliters drained from head swelling. Ooh, uh, Uh, okay, 100 milliliters. I mean, a swelling, I'm thinking of node. Hmm. So I'm thinking of that as a swelling. Is there another, is there another possibility there that I'm missing? I mean, obviously nude fits, but it has nothing to do with anything in the clue. So, your noodle is your head, isn't it? 100 milliliters. So what I'm trying to do in my brain, and my brain is letting me down, is I'm trying to think of what 100 milliliters might be. <laughs> and I'm not having many good ideas. Um, but, but whatever the abbreviation or the synonym is for 100 milliliters, that needs to be removed, I think, from a word for, for head. And I was thinking of your, you know, your noodle or your noggin or something like that. Uh, to leave a word, a four-letter word that means swelling, which I think I think has to be node because I can't think of another four-letter word that's N blank, D blank, that would fit. A 
hundred milliliters. I don't know. I actually, have, I'm not sure about that one. It's the sort of one if I was racing, I'd write in and move on. But when I have to explain it, I'm much less confident about that. Let's try, um, let's try 23 across. So I have to hope my subconscious has a good idea about 19 across. Come on, subconscious work. 23, literary fragments. Okay, is that, well, this is a very difficult word. I think there is a word, Anna. I'm, I'm now questioning even that in my brain. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely check that in the dictionary once I've solved the clue. Smart guy. Oh, Alec. Oh, is it just Anic? No. Uh, introduced to workers. A smart guy must be Alec, mustn't it? It's in a smart Alec. Uh, so, oh, is it Analects then? I mean, that that is not easy. Okay, so I've got that. I, I'm fairly sure that's going to be right. Um, because I know the word Anna is something to do with literary fragments. So this maybe is the long version of that word. Um, and the wordplay seems to work. We've got smart guy, smart Alec, introduced to workers. And workers are ants. You certainly get worker ants, don't you? So analects is what I would enter there. Um, let's see if it's justified by the crossing entries. Slithy creature. Oh, well, that strikes me as something to do with Jabberwocky, isn't it? Slithy. <laughs> Slithy toes, de gyre and gimbal in the wable, mimsy with the borrow goes, and the moam rats out. Wait, wait, or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's something like that. So is it slithy? Is it a slithy to It's trove, isn't it? It is a slithy tove. Okay, so it's a slithy tove um, burying R for Romeo from sort of international radio alphabet and a valuable correction, a collection is a trove. So you have to know a bit of a, a bit of jabberwocky, I think, to be able to understand that clue. Um, 20 down. Rhubarb cake. Uh, rhubarb is a word that means nonsense, isn't it? As well as meaning, obviously, the sort of um, that thing that you put in rhubarb crumble that's most disgusting. <laughs> uh, a cake. What could that be? I don't know. Let's try. Oh, okay. I can get. Oh, look. This is a very appropriate clue for the day. It's Good Friday today. English Daisy Festival. Well, the only synonym I know for Daisy is Daisy is an aster. Uh, e for English. That gives Easter, which is a festival. And it is very... Uh, um, we're right in the middle of it, aren't we? So let's try Criminal Force. Probes chap instructed by director. Criminal Force. Probes chap. Okay, I have got this. The way I got this was I broke the clue down in finally correctly in my brain. So, as you could hear when I was reading the clue, I was doing, I was saying criminal force. Ugh. No, Simon, do not be let, misled by these naughty constructors who try and make you read the clues in the wrong way. We have to split this this clue after the word criminal. So let's read it again. Criminal force probes chap instructed by director. Now, when we read it that way, I was able to think about, okay, do I need know any short synonyms or abbreviations for force? Yes, I do. F. F is an abbreviation for force. Let us check the dictionary and I will show you. Um, now, again, if it's, it has to be justified by the dictionary. You can't just put a word into a clue and say, well, it means it's initial. Uh, now I'm not going to find force, but I'm sure it's here. Force. There we go. Force. Um, so now can we think of a word that means criminal with this construction where there's probably an F in it somewhere? Well, I can. Malefactor. Now, how does this work? Um, well, a chap instructed by a director on the set of a film would be the male actor. So the male actor is probed by F, and that gives 
malefactor, which is a criminal. Now let's go back here then. Rhubarb. Oh, waffle? I think it probably is waffle. I think rhubarb, I mean, it means nonsense, but I think it can also mean to sort of, you know, I think if you waffle, you're sort of talking nonsense, aren't you? And a cake. I think waffle for cake is okay. I'm pausing because it's possible. You know, blank A, blank F, blank E. You know, is, is there anything else there that we could have? Oh, goodness. There's not like, what's the French word for a waffle? It's something like gaufre, isn't it? Oh, no. I mean, is that, a, is this a word in English? Or is go for a double F? And does, you know, if that meant rhubarb. Oh, that's rotten. I mean, if that's right, I mean, that's hard. I mean, I think I would stick with a waffle, but I, if it's wrong, I did have the thought go for it. I just don't know if it has an English meaning. Uh, yeah, I think I would go waffle. <laughs> you may be saying you're always doing that Simon yes I know I know um, right exaggerated performance from Dame put him off exaggerated like ham it up or something oh is this an anagram Ten... yes it's going to be an anagram exaggerated performance from Dame put him off so if we take the letters of Dame put him and we we and they were off then we could anagram them um so that's going to give us so we've obviously got up at the end oh no hang on there's no t uh, oh no there is put sorry i couldn't see it uh so something like uh hammed it oh so it is ha it's hammed it up exaggerated performance hammed it up past tense there we go um should we try two down may as well Terran's ready okay i don't know what this is yet but be aware that the word ready in cryptic crosswords often refers to money you know show me the readies you'd be saying show me the money so is this the word for iran's currency what's that is that the real or something it is wow got that wow okay so a little bit of knowledge was helpful there so we, we've the real i think must be the currency of iran that is turned up so underneath and that's supporting this is a down clue so this f for feminine which is a valid abbreviation again we may even have just seen it did we see it was it one of these ones it definitely is uh Let's go to the lower case. Yeah, there we go. Feminine. Um, so this F is being supported by an upside down, a turned up real to give flair. And if you have talent, you show flair, don't you? So what's this then? Sawyer's rubbish leg pull. On the contrary. Sawyer. Now, now I'm starting to think about that uh, Huckleberry Finn and his friends. <laughs> Songs on the river and in some pirate's den. I used to love that when I was a boy. Um... Um, oh, now I'm going to want to. Oh, I'm trying to think of the lyrics. When, when days they were slower and living was easy and neighbours were friends or something. Oh, can't remember. Uh, Normandy favourite. Normandy favourite arrived. Right on time to receive honour. 
well, I don't know if I don't know if this is right, but I'm thinking camembert. <laughs> um, only because the word I was trying to think of a short synonym for the word arrived, and I was thinking of came, and that would fit at the start. So camembert. Let's just put it in and see. MBE is in there, isn't it, for an honour? So this is probably right. We've got came. Yeah, came R. T for right on time, receiving honour MBE, member of the British Empire, camembert, which is a, a type of cheese, obviously, and presumably a Normandy favourite. So offcut would fit here. Rubbish leg pull, on the contrary. What? Cut off. Oh, is it soy? Is soya? Is that the name for for some for somebody that saws for a living? So, like a sawmill. Saw soya's rubbish. Could that be like sawdust? Gosh, this is right. It's off cut. Right. So. I think what the way this works is it's saying somebody who saws up trees, their rubbish would be the off cut. Now, the word play is saying, let's look at the word leg pull and treat and take an, the antonym, take the opposite for each part of it. Now, the leg side in cricket is the on side. So on the contrary, that would be the off side off. Uh, in cricket, if you pull the ball, you you pull it round on the on the leg side and the opposite of that is a cut which is played on the on the off side so an off cut is the opposite of a leg pull and it, you know in a sort of cryptic way and it's also i think you know the bit that's not used by somebody who's soaring up trees that's how i interpret that at least we've solved it uh oh little squiffy tiddly if you're, yeah, okay. Double, double definition. If you're little, if you if you do, if you caught a small fish, you'd describe it as tiddly or a tiddler. And if you're squiffy, as in drunk, you're tiddly. So that looks right, doesn't it? So okay, well, I haven't done this one yet, but conservative. If you see conservative, it's either literally going to be the initial C or it's going to be Tory normally. So this looks like it's going to start like that. Having been found out, rumbled, fell to pieces, crumbled. So that one's fine. Still got this one hanging over us like the sword of Damocles. Um, rodent. One escaping from silky fabric. Right. So we need to think of... I think this is going to be a rodent. A, a mole's rodents or voles I'm not sure and we need a silky fabric which is going to be five letters and we're going to remove probably an I from it from the for the number one hmm. I'm wondering if I think V-O-I-L-E might be the name of a fabric. I don't know, 14 down. Let's try this. Let's have a look at this one. Pop called each day within confines of office. Pop. Each day. What's that? Per diem? P-D? Pop. I mean, pop is a funny word as well, because pop can be a word for your father, or to, to pop. Called, short synonym for called, rang, named, within confines of office. We need a, a short synonym for office, which I'm not thinking of. Uh, okay, let's try and get some letters in this. Let's try 18. Reportedly nothing large, eaten by one American sea creature. 
platypus. <laughs> is that is that possible? It look it looks like something like octopus or platypus to me. Nautilus, mate. Oh, naught. Yes. Okay. Nautilus. I like that more. Type like of squid, isn't it? Nautilus. Okay. So reportedly nothing. If you see words like reportedly, what it's saying is we need a homophone. So we need something that sounds like a word for nothing. Well, the word nothing is synonymous with naught. N O U G H T. And if you say naught, this naught, N A U T as in nautical, for example, it would sound exactly the same as the word N-O-U-G-H-T, which does mean nothing. So this, this is good. And then large can be L. You'd see that on a T-shirt. If it had L on the label, you'd know it meant large. And that's being eaten by one. That's this one here, Roman numeral for the number one, or just a person, one. Uh, and American, U.S., Nautilus, which is, I think, a squid. Um, so let's try 17. Florida. Okay. I don't know what this answer is, but I do know that FL is the abbreviation, the state abbreviation for Florida. So probably FL is how this starts. Which doctor exercising A? So I haven't got this yet. Oh, uh, Flashman. I, th I, th I think, well, exercising is, uh, is removing, isn't it? Oh, no, it's okay, right. So Florida actually is here, it's FLA. Now that's interesting because I think FL could be Florida as well. Look, there we go, Florida. But presumably FLA can also be Florida then. Yes, that's really mean. So here we've got FLA for Florida and then we've got shaman for a witch doctor removing, exercising its A, its first A, to give shaman, which gives flashman and flashman was a bully. Uh, in the old books uh, that I'm sure many of you have read. I know Mark's a big fan of the Flashman books. I never read any of them, but I am aware of the character. So what's this one then going to be? Uh, chestnut, I'm thinking. Seaside Fanatic Beech Nut? I don't know, is that such a thing? That's brown, dressed in shell suit. <laughs> what? Um, I mean, I, I'm wondering. I, I don't think this is right. But is is that a word? Is it, are we looking at another homo, homophone here? I'm thinking of a seaside fanatic. Might be a beach nut. B e a c h space nut. And if there is a word beech nut, as in the nut of the tree, the beech, could that be defined as something that's brown and dressed in a shell suit? I quite like that. I think that might be right. I mean, it's not easy. It's really not easy. And let's see if we can justify the C. If we can justify the C, I think it probably is right. Uh, what moral code I've just seen at the end, so maybe it's ethic. Um, what it is, it is ethic. Okay. What if somebody says something to you and you went and you went, a eh? you'd be saying what, wouldn't you? What? So a e e h is really is, is what's being defined there. So what is, is the word e h that goes about T for time. That gives us that we add in charge. I C to that. That is a valid abbreviation. Let's have a check of that. I C. Uh, now, now it won't be there. It is. It. Oh, come on. Where is it? It is there. That's weird. I don't understand that. I see is very. It's absolutely standard crossword ease that I see is in charge. I'm. I in charge of. Is it something? I don't know what. What's going on? Maybe I've got to actually look up in charge. Where's that? In charge.
I, sorry, I, I realise I'm looking inept here, but it's, oh, there, there, gosh, okay, so it is there, but it's I, I slash C, that's why I, in charge or in command can be I C at the end of this clue, I thought I was going crazy, moral code is ethic, obviously, let's try that one, 25, American uncle, Sam, knocked back, mass, first of home, first letter of home is H, and a brew is a mash. There we go. Did it. Um, so, again, if we just read the clue slowly, often that is the key. So, monstrous female. Well, I'm think I'm thinking of an ogress. Yes, and that's right, because pair denied promotion. Well, promote promotion would be progress. And if that word is denied an abbreviation for the word pair, which is PR, <laughs> it won't be there now. Uh, pair, there we go. So we deny PR from a word that means promotion and we get ogress, which is a monstrous female. Uh, now we looked at this one, didn't we? Oh, that's interesting. So Or called looks really good for rang there, doesn't it? Each day. Orange aid would fit. Pop. Or oh, that's lovely. <laughs> that's right. Okay. Orange aid is, is the type of pop, as in fizzy drink. So we've got rang. Each EA is a valid abbreviation for EA. Let's check that. Uh, each. There it is. D can be day. So we've got rang EAD all inside the confines of the word office. And that's saying take the, the outside letters of the word office, the O and the E, they are the, the things confining the word, and put those around the outside of rang EA and D. And we get orange A. That's my favourite clue so far. Oh, goodness. So this is, is this going to be. So now we're left with this horrible, I mean, I think V-O-I-L-E is a fabric, but I'm rubbish at fabrics. I really am. It could just as easy. Well, M-O-I-L-E is a vole, a rodent. <sighs> I mean, these are the questions that one is left grappling with. Or is there another rodent that I'm not thinking of? Like some sort of mouse. Um, or should I just be trying to think of a silky fabric? Maybe that's a better way of going about it. Because it probably... Like there are fabrics like... Is it Tweel? T U. ILE or something. But that wouldn't have an O in it. Or T T is T O I L E. Is that is that also a fabric? I think that's a word. Golly, I could get this wrong. I could definitely, I've got two answers left. I'm very unsure about both of them. So for this one, I'm thinking I need to think of a silky fabric that is blank O-I blank E. Uh, oh, now. <laughs> and when I take the I out, I'm left with a rodent. Let me just, I just want to give this a moment, given, given this is meant to be um, not a speed run. Let me just think about this for a second. Uh, can I think of anything else that I like the feel of there? Not yet. Um... Still, still not got anything that I, yeah, I think I'd go for Vol with much trepidation. 
And then this one as well, 100 milliliters drained from head. Is there an abbreviation for 100 milliliters I'm just not aware of? Is that, is that the same as a centiliter? 100 milliliters. Maybe it is. That would be CL. That doesn't feel right though, does it? To take CL out of a word that's got N and D in it. And it all means swelling. I mean, I'm pretty sure this is node. So what have we removed? Maybe, oh, maybe it's DL. Maybe it's deciliter or something. Noddle. N-O-D. Do we think noddle is a word? N-O-double-D-L-E? I mean, it's. I, I don't know. I, I know noodle. And I know noodle means head. But if, it, if it's noodle, I've got to take the L out separately from the O, which, which feels weird. I don't, think, I don't think the constructor is thinking of the word noodle here and removing things from the word noodle. I think maybe noddle. Maybe noddle is a word and DL can be 100 milliliters for reasons that I've, maybe it's deciliter or something. I don't know. So I think I'd go for this with much trepidation. Uh, let's let's see, um, and then we can do some looking up. So we're submitting without leaderboard. This is going to be terribly bad if I've got it. Oh, this is right at least. Good. Um, so let us now expose my ignorance. So we were thinking. I was thinking it was this. There it is. Any of several kinds of thin semi-transparent material from the French word veil. Wow. And was I right? I thought that there was I thought there was twill. Oh no, apparently not. That's odd. I've obviously invented those. Oh see that's that's there. So this was this was a word. So had if T O L E is a rodent, this clue is ambiguous, but it won't be. A toll is something. Lacquered Japanese Japaned tinware. And uh, apparently to lure or decoy in US or dialectic English. So okay. So anyway, that's justified vol. Now let's see noddle. Is that a word? Yes the head or the brain now let's let me just justify noodle i'm sure is also a word for it. the head there we go and so dl is 100 milliliters in some way a deciliter so it's a deciliter a tenth part of a liter okay wow I mean, i've not seen that before i think that's really hard so we've got to take dl out of noddle uh in order to understand that now beech nut was correct let's look up beech nut uh, it's not there, is it? Is beech nut? Am I, am I not seeing it? <laughs> That's quite funny. I don't see it there. Beech nut doesn't seem to be there. It must it must be in a different dictionary then? Wow. Okay, so beech nut, not even in chambers. I love the fact that John did this in under three minutes and it's it's not that easy is it i don't think it's that easy analects now ana i think is a word here we go let's see if i'm right there we go a collection of someone's table talk of gossip literary anecdotes or possessions now what was the definition of 23 across literary fragments so it must be from the same root analect a collect there we go collected literary fragments good grief i mean that's not easy um okay off oh off cut let's just look at off cut is that is that actually literally the definition a small piece cut off and left over from some larger piece of material e.g wood so very much it is and so sawyer was not tom sawyer it was someone who makes a living by sawing timber very good 
Um, Dora the Explorer, we understood. Angel, Leningrad, Crumble, Tiddly Flare, Camembert, Vole, Nautilus. I mean, Nautilus, I'm sure we're all familiar with. Let's just go and have a look, though. I think it's a squid. A <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to go around and look up Ceph cephalopod. Where is cephalopod? Mollusks is usually large, exclusively marine animals, including the squid. Um, ogress, we understood. Flashman, we understood. I think I think most of the rest of it. I mean, it's it's really fascinating, isn't it? That. that at least I think it's really interesting. This supposedly easy puzzle, which which is statistically easy. Um, oh, gopher. I wanted to look up gopher. Gopher. There it is. It's there as a waffle from the French. So so it did it did only have one F, but luckily it doesn't mean rhubarb as well. It only has one meaning. I mean that's quite. <laughs> It's quite difficult, isn't it? Rhubarb. Let's have a look at rhubarb. And does it... Yeah, there it means nonsense or a word muttered repeatedly to give the impression of indistinct background conversation in the theatre. Oh, really? So if you just go rhubarb, 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 it's that, that's, that's, that's what you do to, um, to give the impression of babble. Um... Yeah, but I mean, if we if we actually just this is why the Times crossword is so interesting because even when it's apparently easy, there are you know there's a multitude of things that we had to understand a little bit to solve this. You know, we had to know a bit of literature, we had to know a bit of ancient Greek like roots for analects. We had to um, we had to think there might be a word beech nut, which Chambers Dictionary doesn't even know. We had to think of pop as being orange aid. Uh, we had to know the currency of Iran. We had to know the battle of Leningrad. Um, we even had to know about Dusty Springfield. And then we had to be able to quote Jabberwocky. <laughs> it's not it's not that easy. Flashman. <laughs> Mad. Absolutely mad. Let me know in the comments how you got on and whether you found this easy. I will be interested in the comments, which I enjoy, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. <laughs>